Wednesday was the day that we got to see what Caleb Williams can do. Never mind the fact that we've seen him do it, you know, on a football field with a helmet and pads on in games for years. Yesterday's the only glimpse of Caleb Williams submitting to the draft industrial complex and throwing footballs to his former teammates at USC in the form of a pro day workout. 50 passes, six foot seven eighths inches. Don't put him next to Gronk without putting him on a box either. 217 pounds. Six foot seven eighths, is that right? Boy, he's not really all that tall. No. Six foot seven yeah. eighths. I think they listed him at six one, right? I think that's what he was listed at, at at USC in Oklahoma, if I remember correctly. So it's it's just short of that, right? Uh, that surprises me. I mean, Mahomes is a solid six two, six three. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't well, he? it surprises you too because again, I think it goes back a little to what we were talking about with you. It, it's a big six foot and seven eighths, right? It is long arms. Long arms. It is. It's yeah. long arms. It's square shoulders. There's thickness in the legs and butt area, right? You can see he's got legs like a running back in a lot of ways. It's one of the things I love about him, right? The, the workout itself was was good. It was a go through the motions workout, right? He's got nothing to prove. He, he, you know, again, he knows he's the top quarterback in the draft. Uh, I think he knows there. There's the Chicago brass right behind him. He knows the Bears want him. All of that stuff. So, you know, I think this was more of just like, go through it. Let me show you how I could throw the football a little bit. But he didn't try to do anything where he was trying to wow people. He didn't throw one sidearm throw. He never got on the run and threw really many. And he's he's really the, the one of the best on the run throwing quarterbacks I've ever seen, right? He didn't try to do like, let me show you a, a, a Zach Wilson throw, right? That got so much attention, like off of the ground, throwing a post across the field, right? It, it, it felt like it was going through the, the motions. He didn't try to show off or do anything like that. So I, I can't say it was like an overwhelming wow, right, Mike? Uh, I, I think you start there. But, man, the way he throws the football, it's effortless. And anybody that sees him, and you can tell on some of the throws, like play back the package again, guys, if you can. That first throw we show on the package, the seam down the middle. I mean, he – like – TV doesn't do him justice because he could throw it so well and the mechanics are so well. I mean, that was a 30-yard throw. He put nothing into it, right? Yeah. You know know what I mean? And that's what you see. And that's where, you know, the theatrics of maybe a Brett Favre and doing all that, Caleb Williams is different. It's a little bit like, you know, Brady. Brady was so – Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, Brady, Rodgers, right. Until you see it in person, you go, ooh, Man, it spins a lot more than I thought. It pops out of his hand, and he threw a few other routes in the workout too where, again, you know, it looks like he's throwing an easy, but if you don't have a trained eye or haven't seen it a ton, you, you, you won't recognize like, whoa, did that ball and that curl route just pop out of his hands and get to that receiver in like, you know, a half a second, a split second. Uh, but, you know, all in all, it was good. But it wasn't anything crazy over the top. Let me show you all this magic I can do and all that. Like that, right there. That's effortless, just absolute laser. And that's what I love about Caleb Williams. Hey, and look, one of the realities, too, showing up to make the throws on your pro day workout, you're supporting your teammates who are there working out as well. Big and part of it. prefer to have right. a quarterback like Caleb Williams there working out because that draws more scouts in. That draws more teams in, and that gets more people looking at them. And there have been stories over the years about how a coach or a GM shows up at a workout thinking about one guy right, and ends up right. focusing on the other guy. Isn't that how Bill Walsh found Joe Montana? I, I think Looking it, at Dwight Clark? I, I think it was something was that like it? that. I don't know if it was that one. The one I was going to go to in recent that? history was Chris Ballard. Right, I think they were in Indian or uh, working out Desmond Ritter, at Ritter, and they saw yeah. Alec Pierce, and they were like, "Holy crap, this kid is like he can run. He's big. He's quick. He runs great routes." And they ended up drafting him. But yeah, there's been a lot of stories like that through time where you know they go there to evaluate quarterback. Quarterback's putting the ball on the money, but they're starting to recognize, "Damn, okay, the receiver here is damn good too." And and that that is part of your duty if you're Caleb Williams. He, he does want to make his guys look good and put them in the best position to, uh, uh, possible. Not that either guy really worked out the way the Rams had hoped, but they discovered West Virginia receiver Stedman Bailey when they went oh, to Morgantown to take a closer right. look at Tavon Austin back in 2013. That's right. And Stedman Bailey. Bailey ultimately was 
shot in the head and survived and tried to come back. Holy some crap, point, you're right. Was, I forgot about that. I mean, how yeah. how in the world can you come back from that? But he at least tried to do it. And Tavon Austin was a guy whose highlight reel makes you say, and this was on Twitter yesterday. My son sent me the clip of the play. He had a a, a pitch against the Bears at some point in his career where he just exploded. Like, how in the world did some team not fully harness the explosiveness of Tavon Austin? How was he not? The, the, the tweet said that in an alternate universe, Tavon Austin is a five-time All-Pro. Right. And that's really not crazy because he did have an incredible skill set. For whatever reason, it was just never fully unleashed in the NFL. The Rams never knew quite how to use him. And if you put him with a, a, a coach who would have gotten more out of him, who knows what he would have become. All right, so back to Caleb Williams. Your takeaway, nothing special, didn't need to be. Yeah. He's the guy. We all know he's the guy. It's right. not like he's trying to hold off Jaden Daniels. Right. He's the guy, clearly, unequivocally, and yesterday was just checking the box. I think so. And he played it safe, right? I think he just he played it safe, like, hey, you're getting to see me. Here I am. I'm going through the workout. Here's the throw, all that stuff. Right, he throws. He shows variety of throws. That's that's what he's. You know, again, like Mahomes, that's where he's great. He can throw rifles, but he could do stuff like this too, where he could just. He's got great touch. I mean, he's got incredible touch. There's really no throw he doesn't have. Uh, now, you know, saying that he played it safe, it looked good, all of that. Is there a part of me, Chris Sims, that sits here and goes, man, I wish he would have shown off a little bit. I wish like a few of these, he would have just gone, I'm going to show you the 100 mile per hour fastball here, or I'm going to throw a sidearm one here down the middle like I do in a game and hit a, you know, hit a 20 yard crosser. I wish he would have done a little bit of that, you know, but again, I think where he's at, where he's at in this process and, and his comfort level and all the things that you alluded to there, I think he just kind of played it safe, went through the motions, checked the box, like you said, and said, let's go, let's move on with life. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.